Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Theme Park 101. Today, we'll be taking a look at all the rides and attractions at both Disney parks at the Tokyo Disney Resort. Let's start with the park that began it all, Tokyo Disneyland. The park opened in 1983, making it the third Disney resort and the first outside the US. You enter the park into the unique World Bazaar, which is similar to the Main Street USAs found at other castle parks. Unlike them, it is covered by a glass Victorian style conservatory roof to give guests a more comfortable experience. It features lots of dining and shopping locations, as well as two side streets that take you directly to either Adventure Land or Tomorrowland. Similar to other main streets, you can take a ride on the omnibus throughout the day as well as catch some live entertainment like the Tokyo Disneyland Band. You can also find the Penny Arcade with lots of antique claw machines, sports games and other fun arcade machines. If you keep heading straight through the World Bazaar, you will come to one of the best castle reveals at any Disney park, as well as the huge main hub area, which is perfect for viewing the parades and nighttime entertainment. As with all my attraction guides, I'll be heading around the park clockwise, which takes us to the next area, Adventureland. This land is a mixture of different sublands, starting with the New Orleans section that houses the popular dark ride on water, Pirates of the Caribbean. This classic ride features some amazing scenes, including a pirate ship battle, a ransacked town, and treasure coves, as well as a few appearances from Captain Jack Sparrow and Davy Jones. You can also dine in the Blue Bayou restaurant that overlooks a section of the ride. Further into the land, you will come to the Theatre Orleans, with the current show being Jamboree Mickey Let's Dance. This is a high energy dance party that is perfect for the younger guests to dance along to and can be enjoyed at this wonderful outdoor seated theatre. As you leave the Orleans section, you will enter a more jungle themed adventure land, starting with the classic boat ride, Jungle Cruise Wildlife Expeditions. Join aboard this cruise as you meander down the river while being surrounded by some amazing animal audio animatronics. The indoor temple section features amazing projections and at night, the Jungle Cruise takes it up a notch with amazing lighting and sound effects throughout. As with all the entertainment in the park, the skippers will only speak Japanese, so you may miss the classic corny jokes, but it is still a great ride nonetheless. In the same entrance building for the Jungle Cruise is the Western River Railroad. Unlike other Disney parks, the railroad at Tokyo Disneyland doesn't go around the whole park and it only has one working station, so you won't be able to use it to travel to other areas of the park. But it is still an amazing attraction and well worth a ride. The steam train travels through Adventureland, Westernland and Critter Country and you will see some amazing attractions including Splash Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain, as well as being able to see some beautiful dioramas and scenery. Next to the Jungle Cruise and Railroad is the classic Disney show with a twist. The Enchanted Tiki Room, Stitch presents Aloha e Como Me. This features all the impressive audio animatronic birds, flowers and tiki statues performing songs from Lilo and Stitch and the original Tiki Room show, before being interrupted by the mischievous Stitch. He wants a part of the show and is allowed to perform a song as long as he doesn't interfere with the rest of the show. This is a wonderful performance and is a great mixture of classic classic Disney and something fun for everyone to enjoy. Opposite is the final attraction in Adventureland and another classic, the Swiss Family Treehouse. This is a pleasant walkthrough attraction, giving you some great views of Adventureland. It is based on the classic 1960 Disney live action film, Swiss Family Robinson, with plenty of Easter eggs dotted around the attraction. Unfortunately, this attraction has been closed for more than a year, but we hope it makes a comeback in the near future. Recently, a new dining show has been added to Adventureland. You can head to the Polynesian Terrace Restaurant for Mickey's Rainbow Luau. This is a fun and entertaining show where Mickey and his friends celebrate with the guests with special music and dance styles from the Polynesian Islands. With some unique style food and drink, this is a great character dining experience and we suggest booking in advance to avoid disappointment. We now move on to the next area, Westernland, which is Tokyo's version of the more commonly known Frontierland, found at other Disney parks around the world. 
First up is the Country Bear Theatre, which most will know as the Country Bear Jamboree. This is an awesome little show featuring amazing audio animatronic bears singing tongue-in-cheek country songs. The songs are sang in a mixture of Japanese and English, so can be enjoyed by more guests. And the show has two different special overlays. The Jingle Jamboree can be seen during the winter months with plenty of Christmas songs, and the Vacation Jamboree is played throughout the summer that includes more of a rock-based soundtrack. All the versions are amazing and is definitely worth a watch. It has recently been announced that the Country Bear Jamboree will be updated in Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World, but it is unknown whether Tokyo Disneyland will follow suit. Next up is the popular Big Thunder Mountain. This mine train roller coaster really doesn't disappoint. The theming is fantastic and takes you on an exciting journey through the dips and turns of an abandoned mine. You'll also encounter dinosaur bones, hear the cranking of the lift hill and bell whistles, and have a very enjoyable ride overall. If you enjoy a more relaxing ride, then head to the Mark Twain Riverboat that cruises around the rivers of America as you take in the sights of Westernland, Tom Sawyer Island, and Critter Country. It's a nice little 20 minute relaxing ride, so it's perfect for taking a break in between some of the more intense attractions in the park. As we just mentioned, you will be circling around Tom Sawyer Island, which you can access by taking a raft boat within Westernland. The island contains caves with references to characters from the 1876 Mark Twain novel, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. It provides interactive, climbing and scenic opportunities in its caves, forts and other exciting landmarks. There is also another new dining show that has just been added to Westernland. This is the Diamond Variety Muster that can be found at the Diamond Horseshoe. Join your host Clarabelle Cow and Horace Horse Collar as they present a classic American variety show. With such special guests like Mickey Mouse and friends, you'll be clapping along to the catchy songs in no time. We now move on to the smallest area in the park, Critter Country, that is home to two attractions. First is the classic log flume ride, Splash Mountain. This will take you on an exciting journey with Br'er Rabbit as he leaves home for an adventure while being pursued by the despicable Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear. At over 10 minutes, this is one of the longest attractions in Tokyo Disneyland and is a great way to cool down on a hot day. You can also enjoy Grandma Sarah's kitchen that is located in the mountainside of Splash Mountain and often offers stunning views of this great attraction. In Critter Country, you can also take to the Rivers of America on the Beaver Brothers Explorer Canoes. You can join in the fun as you paddle around Tom Sawyer Island while taking in the amazing sights of Tokyo Disneyland. This only operates on busy days, usually weekends and the summer months, and will close early to prepare for the nighttime shows. The Beaver Brothers have also been linked in with the backstory of Splash Mountain, fully completing this immersive land. It's time to move on to Fantasyland and the 11 amazing attractions that it has to offer. The first attraction you will see as you enter the land is Dumbo the Flying Elephant. This is the classic aerial carousel star ride that is perfect for younger guests. This is the only attraction that can be found at all six Disney castle parks worldwide, so you know it's a fan favorite. Next door to Dumbo is the Haunted Mansion, an attraction that you wouldn't usually find in Fantasyland. This offers great theming, a fun storyline, and awesome special effects. It has one of the greatest ride pre-shows in the infamous stretching room before you head on to the Omnimover ride system that takes you through many different scenes within this classic dark ride. During the Halloween and Christmas season, the Haunted Mansion is transformed into the Haunted Mansion Holiday Nightmare, which adds themed elements and a whole new soundtrack from the popular movie A Nightmare Before Christmas. We need to head into the beautiful Cinderella's Castle for the next attraction, Cinderella's Fairy Tale Hall. This walkthrough has a mixture of paintings and murals detailing the story of Cinderella, and once you reach the Grand Hall, you can sit upon the throne and see the infamous glass slipper. Right outside the castle is the classic dark ride Snow White's Adventures. This dark ride certainly lives up to its name as it has continued to keep the darker storyline that the original Disneyland version replaced in 1994, mainly focusing on the Queen's transformation into the witch and her evil plan, with Snow White only appearing once throughout the ride. This isn't the fun, happy attraction that it may seem, but it is thrilling nonetheless. From one classic attraction to another, next door to Snow White's Adventures is Peter 
Peter Pan's flight. This amazing dark ride takes you through some memorable scenes from the classic Disney animation on board your own flying ship. New scenes and digital effects were added to the attraction in 2016, which only adds to this already fantastic ride. Back into the main Fantasyland courtyard and directly behind the castle is the Castle Carousel. This is your chance to ride on one of the beautiful wooden horses or chariots on this classic carousel ride. I think it's best to ride at night to enjoy the amazing scenery around Fantasyland while listening to an organ-based soundtrack of Disney classics. On the other side of the courtyard are two more attractions, the first being the 3D show Mickey's Magic. This is a great show filled with classic Disney characters and a fun storyline. Join Donald Duck as he goes through scenes from some classic Disney animations, including Fantasia, Aladdin, The Lion King and more. It has recently added some new scenes that features the fan favourite Pixar movie, Coco. Next door is another dark ride, Pinocchio's Daring Journey. This is a fun attraction which will take you through scenes that feature the Stromboli Circus, Pleasure Island, Monster of the Whale and other characters from the 1940 classic animated film. Similar to Snow White Adventures, this is a lot darker than it looks on the outside, so I would advise warning the younger guests before riding. Next is the spinning teacup ride, Alice's Tea Party. Based on the unbirthday party scene in Walt Disney's Alice in Wonderland, you can enjoy this nice classic Disney attraction and don't forget to look out for the hidden dormouse that appears throughout the ride. Right at the back of Fantasyland is everybody's favourite dark ride on water, It's a Small World. This is a classic Disney attraction that includes over 300 audio animatronic dolls in traditional costumes from cultures around the world. And the classic theme song that can be heard in Japanese, Mandarin and English that will get stuck in your head for days. You can look out for the 40 Disney characters that can be seen throughout the ride. Before we move on to the newest area in Fantasyland, there is one final attraction in the main area, which is Pooh's Honey Hunt. Although it is similar to other Winnie the Pooh dark rides, this uses a trackless ride system which allows riders to glide smoothly from scene to scene. It's a great use of new technology and still remains one of the most popular rides in the park. In 2020, Tokyo Disneyland opened a whole new area of Fantasyland based on the Beauty and the Beast. It includes the Beast Castle two dining locations and the exciting attraction Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast. This is also a trackless dark ride that takes you through the story of the animated classic all set in the Enchanted Castle. All the scenes feature amazing audio animatronics of Belle, the Beast and other characters from the movie, as well as a soundtrack of all your favourite songs. Also in this new area is the Fantasyland Forest Theatre and the brand new original show Mickey's Magical Music World. This is a great show that sees Mickey, Minnie, Donald and Goofy discovering a magical music box deep in the forest. Throughout the show, many Disney characters appear as well as plenty of classic Disney tunes that will have you singing along with joy. Make sure to arrive early for this amazing show. We now move on to the next land, Toontown. This land is filled with lots of fun playhouses and a chance to meet and greet different Disney characters. You can take a look inside Mickey's house and meet the main mouse himself or meet Minnie in her unique style studio. You can also take a tour of Minnie's house and Donald's boat, have some fun with the interactive elements at Goofy's paint and playhouse or burn off some energy at the play areas in Chippendale's treehouse and Toon Park. There are also some rides in Toontown with the first being Gadget's Go Coaster. This is a a junior roller coaster themed to Gadget Hack Wrench from Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. This is the shortest Tokyo Disneyland attraction at a whopping 44 seconds, but it's still entertaining for the younger guests. The final attraction in Toontown is Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin, a dark ride themed to the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. As the name suggests, this ride spins as it follows a track through a variety of scenes featuring a host of characters from the classic 1988 film. So we now move on to the final land in this guide, Tomorrowland. First up is the newest attraction in the land, the Happy Ride with Baymax. This gives you a chance to ride with the lovable healthcare companion robots from Big Hero 6. The whip ride swings guests around and around to a backdrop of an original pumping soundtrack and is great fun for all the family. Next is the amazing indoor roller coaster Space Mountain. This is a staple of any Tomorrowland, which includes an atmospheric spacey queue line and an almost pitch black ride through, with a few special lighting 
editing and sound effects. Unfortunately, Space Mountain will close in early 2024 and will be completely rebuilt into a much more futuristic style along with a brand new Tomorrowland Square that is set to open in 2027. If you have the chance, go ride Space Mountain in its original form before it's gone forever. Next door is the indoor amphitheater Showbase, which currently houses the high energy show Club Mouse Beat. This stage show uses a variety of show sets and musical styles that includes characters and songs from Cars, Zootopia, a goofy movie, and of course Mickey and Minnie join in with this fun and entertaining show. Make sure to arrive early for this one. You can meet Stitch at the Stitch Encounter, an interactive show that allows younger guests to communicate with Stitch via a live satellite link up. It's amazing that this real-time computer graphics really feel like you're talking to Stitch as you will need to assist him through a variety of adventures. Due to the nature of the technology, it makes each viewing a totally unique experience and even though the show is only in Japanese, it is still enjoyable to watch. Opposite Stitch Encounter is Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters, the shooting dark ride that lets you compete with your family and friends to get the highest score as you help Buzz Lightyear take on the evil Emperor Zerg. This attraction is great to re-ride to try and beat your friends or your own previous scores. Next is Star Tours The Adventure Continues. It's a simple 3D motion simulator ride that now features a variety of scenes from all three trilogies. With these new scenes, there is a total of 384 different combinations, giving each ride a complete unique experience and gives the chance of a lot of re-rideability. The final attraction in Tomorrowland is Monsters Inc. Ride and Go Seek. This is a fun interactive dark ride that transports you to the city of Monstropolis as you join in a game of flashlight tag. Each guest is given a flashlight as you try to find all the interactive elements which will activate when you shine a light on the different Monsters Inc. helmets. All the popular characters can be seen throughout the ride at the various scenes that are set after the first movie. This is a great original attraction that's a lot of fun to compete with your family and friends. Now let's take a look at all the parades and nighttime entertainment that Tokyo Disneyland has to offer. First up is the new daytime parade, Disney Harmony in Color. This features 11 floats celebrating adventure, family and friendship. Created for Tokyo Disneyland's 40th anniversary, the parade includes characters from Coco, Zootopia, Big Hero 6 and Tangled, as well as a host of Disney princesses and other classic Disney characters. The finale features Mickey and Minnie along with their closest friends in an overall amazing parade that you won't want to miss. Starting in Fantasyland, the parade route comes down through Westernland around the main hub area in front of the castle before ending in Toontown. You can also enjoy the Tokyo Disneyland Electrical Parade Dreamlights that features Mickey and his pals as well as characters from Aladdin, Toy Story and other Disney films appearing on colorful floats that uses special lighting effects that makes this a dazzling nighttime show and one not to be missed. It uses the same parade route as the daytime show so there is plenty of space to enjoy this amazing parade. There is also a unique fireworks show called Sky Full of Colors, which illuminates the nighttime sky with colorful fireworks to the soundtrack of the 40th anniversary theme and some classic Disney songs. So that wraps up all the attractions in Tokyo Disneyland. Now let's head to arguably the best Disney park in the world, Tokyo Disney Sea. As you make your way through the Disney Sea Plaza and the park entrance, you will first enter into the Mediterranean Harbor, which is themed to an Italian port city complete with gondolas, shops, restaurants and a few attractions. Also built into the architecture of the port is the Hotel Miracosta, which not only offers easy entrance into the park, but gives a more authentic feeling that it's a living, breathing city. The first attraction in this guide is actually the newest in the park, Soaring Fantastic Flight. It has a complete new theme and vehicle design compared to the other soarings around the world. This popular flying simulator ride is housed in the Museum of Fantastic Flight, where you join Camellia Falco on a special flight that travels all over the world before ending back at the beautiful Disney Sea. With its amazing design and links to the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, many are calling this the best version of the four different soaring attractions, and I find 
find that hard to disagree. Next, you can head to the amazing walkthrough attraction, Fortress Explorations, which celebrates the golden age of exploration and explorers like Leonardo da Vinci and Marco Polo. This also has many different interactive exhibits and experiences that can be enjoyed freely or with an accompanying game called the Leonardo Challenge. Heading back to the main part of the Mediterranean harbour, you can take a nice relaxing ride on the Venetian gondolas, as the gondoliers take you on a journey around the Palazzo canals while telling stories about the surrounding scenery. The final attraction in this first port of call is the Disney Sea Transit Steamer Line. This is a special water transportation system that links three of the lands within Disney Sea. You can travel between the Mediterranean harbour, the American waterfront, and the furthest land from the entrance, Lost River Delta. Not only is it a great way to navigate the park, but also just a fun relaxing ride to take, especially at night. As with all my guides, I will head around the park clockwise, so let's follow the transit steamer line to the next land, the American waterfront. This port is split into two different areas, the bustling New York City set at the end of the industrial age, and the quiet New England fishing village, Cape Cod. The first attraction in American Waterfront is Toy Story Mania, the interactive 3D shooting gallery featuring characters from the Toy Story franchise. It has great interactivity, rewritability, and genuinely enjoyable for adults and kids alike as you try to compete for the highest score. Next up is the attraction you won't be able to miss, Tower of Terror. This is unlike other versions of Tower of Terror due to its very unique design and storyline. You will need to enter Hotel Hightower, named after the infamous antique dealer Harrison Hightower III, who mysteriously disappeared due to the stolen idol, Shiriki Utundu. This ride is also linked to the Society of Explorers and Adventures and features the usual drops, dark elements, and great storyline that the Tower of Terror is known for. For a more lighter attraction, you can head to the massive SS Columbia that, as well as having two dining locations and beautiful views of the park, it also houses Turtle Talk, an interactive show starring Crush the Sea Turtle from the Finding Nemo films. The animated characters interact with the audience in this special digital puppetry and is especially exciting for the younger guests. Just in front of the SS Columbia is the Dockside stage that is currently performing the show Jamboree Mickey Let's Dance. This is a high energy dance party that is perfect for the younger guests to dance along to and can be enjoyed at this wonderful outdoor seated theatre. Another show can be found in the Broadway Music Theatre called Big Band Beat, a special treat. This is a stylish review type show featuring swing jazz, fantastic dances by Disney characters, and you will be wowed when Mickey Mouse gets on the drums. You can hop on the big city vehicles around the American waterfront. They include an open top town car, a delivery truck, police wagon and more as you take in the sights and sounds of this beautiful park. Recently added in the Cape Cod section of the port is Duffy and Friends Wonderful Friendship. This is a special character dining experience at the Cape Cod Cook-Off Restaurant. Enjoy this awesome stage show with Duffy and Friends while dining on burgers, nuggets or Japanese curry. The final attraction in the American waterfront is another type of transportation, the Disney Sea Electric Railway. This is an elevated electric trolley car system that offers amazing views and conveniently transports guests to the next land in this guide, Port Discovery. Also known as the Tomorrowland of Tokyo Disney Sea, this futuristic marina is home to two attractions. First up is Nemo and Friends Sea Rider, a large scale motion simulator ride where guests board a fish shaped submarine and are shrunk down to the size of a typical fish. They are then guided by Dory and Nemo as they go on an adventure through the ocean. This is a great attraction for all the family to enjoy. The other ride in Port Discovery is Aquatopia, a trackless water ride that uses the same system as Pooh's Honey Hunt and Mystic Manor, except it uniquely travels through shallow water, giving the illusion of floating on top of the water. During the summer, the attraction is split into the regular dry version, or you can choose the wet version that adds water fountains and the chance to get soaked. We now go from the modern port discovery to the ancient civilization within the Lost River Delta. But before you cross the bridge into the main section of the land, you will first see the hangar stage that is usually home to seasonal shows during Halloween and Christmas. 
As you enter the main section of the Lost River Delta, you will see the ancient Mexican temple, which is home to Indiana Jones Adventure, Temple of the Crystal Skull. This is a dark ride that takes you on an adventure with Dr. Jones as he searches for the Fountain of Youth, but things don't go as planned due to the dangerous Crystal Skull, and you will rush to try to escape. This is an amazing attraction with lots of different scenes, music, and hidden easter eggs from all the Indiana Jones movies. This is one not to be missed. The next attraction in the Lost River Delta is Raging Spirits, a roller coaster that travels in and around the jungle and a 5,000 year old temple. This is the only attraction at the Tokyo Disney Resort that features an inversion with its single vertical loop, which also makes it one of the most thrilling rides. As I mentioned before, you can also take the Disney Sea Transit steamer line from the Lost River Delta that will take you back to the Mediterranean Harbour near the entrance of the park. The next land is the Arabian Coast, which is mainly based on Agrabah, the city from the Disney classic Aladdin. The first attraction is Jasmine's Flying Carpets, which gives guests control of the magic carpet as you spin around Jasmine's garden. This is perfect for the younger guests. Next up is Sinbad's Storybook Voyage, the dark ride on water that follows the adventures of the infamous Sinbad and his lovable tiger sidekick Chandu. You'll encounter mermaids, pirates, a giant, and some mischievous monkeys as you travel to different lands before returning home. This features over 150 audio animatronics as well as a beautiful soundtrack and is one you definitely won't want to miss. This attraction will be closing soon for an extended period of time, so I would advise always checking the official Tokyo Disney Resort website to see which attractions and shows will be closed during the date of your visit. Next, you have a chance to win some special prizes and the different fun games in Abu's Bazaar as you head towards the other side of the land. Here is where you can find the Caravan Carousel, a two-story carousel that lets you ride the traditional horses as well as various Arabian animals like camels, elephants and griffins. Keep an eye out as you may get the chance to ride the magic carpet or even genie. The final attraction in the Arabian Coast port is the Magic Lamp Theatre. In this fun 3D show, an untalented magician finds the magic lamp and uses the genie to become one of the most powerful magicians in the world. The magician's assistant and genie hatch a plan to make the magician use his final wish, therefore freeing genie. The live action show uses real magic tricks as well as 3D effect to bring genie to life. Moving back into the center of the park, the next port of call is Mermaid Lagoon, which is of course based on The Little Mermaid, and most of its attractions are located inside King Triton's palace, which gives the illusion of being underwater. Let's begin with the two outdoor attractions, starting with Flounder's Flying Fish Coaster. This is a nice little steel family coaster that is themed to Ariel's best friend, Flounder. You will glide along with him and his flying fish entourage. Next is Scuttle Scooters, a caterpillar style ride that seats guests in various hermit crabs as you spin around all under the watchful eye of Scuttle the Seagull. For the other attractions, you will need to enter Triton's Kingdom, starting with the Whirlpool, a spinning teacup ride where you will sit in cups made of kelp as you are spun around on this whirlwind adventure. Next is Ariel's Playground, which has loads of fun and interactive elements. It features Ariel's Grotto, filled with her collection of treasures, a shipwreck, Ursula's Lair and Dungeon, as well as statues that shoot water. This is a great place for the younger guests to play and explore. Another attraction that is fun for the younger guests is Jumpin' Jellyfish, a small parachute drop ride which allows the guests to board colourful jellyfish as you slowly descend back to the bottom of the sea. Next is the fantastic show in the Mermaid Lagoon Theatre, called King Triton's Concert. All your favourite characters perform all the wonderful songs from the movie with the use of puppetry, special effects and live actors in this truly unique stage show. Unfortunately, the show has yet to return after its closure in 2020, but we hope it makes a comeback in the near future. The final attraction in the Mermaid Lagoon is Blowfish Balloon Race, a spinner attraction that lifts you up from the seabed in seashell gondolas as the fully inflated blowfish spin you around and around. Although this area is aimed at the younger guests, it is a great place to come to enjoy the cool AC or warm heaters in the summer and winter months, as well as its fun underwater atmosphere.
So we now come to the final land in this guide, Mysterious Island, which is based around the famous Jules Verne novel and is also home to the park's icon, Mount Prometheus, an active volcano that can be seen to burst with fire and smoke throughout the day. You can find two great attractions in this port, starting with 20,000 leagues under the sea. This is a dark ride that submerges guests into the deep depths within the Neptune submarines as you join Captain Nemo as volunteers volunteer crew. You'll see a coral reef, shipwrecks and an abundance of aquatic life before being attacked by a giant squid. You escape through a trench only to find the lost city of Atlantis. This is a great fully immersive attraction that is fun for all the family. The final ride in Mysterious Island is the journey to the center of the Earth. You will need to head into Captain Nemo's secret base inside the formidable Mount Prometheus. After wandering through the caverns and taking special elevators down to the base station, you'll board steam-powered mine vehicles and head deep into the volcano and find a whole other world, complete with all types of strange flora and fauna, including a not-so-friendly creature. This is another great unique dark ride that can't be missed. There are some other exciting shows and nighttime entertainment in the park, including Believe Sea of Dreams, the amazing water show that replaced Fantasmic. It features some amazing boats filled with all your favorite characters, along with some awesome special effects, including lasers, pyrotechnics, and projection mapping that fills up all of the Mediterranean harbor. With a killer soundtrack, this is the show not to be missed. Also, to celebrate the Tokyo Disney Resort's 40th anniversary, two exciting shows will run until the end of March 2024. Let's Celebrate with Colors is the welcome show that sees Mickey and friends greeting guests on board the special 40th anniversary boat to the backdrop of the official anniversary theme song, and at night, you can enjoy the fireworks show Sky Full of Colors to the same song as well as other Disney classics. Before we go, there are many exciting additions coming to the park in the near future. Construction is almost complete for the new land that will be coming to the park called Fantasy Springs. The themed Port of Call will be comprised of three distinct areas, recreating the worlds of the Disney films Frozen, Tangled and Peter Pan, as well as a deluxe hotel with a one-of-a-kind special wing that will be the most luxurious accommodations ever at the Tokyo Disney Resort. We can't wait for this exciting new addition coming to the park which should be opening in the spring of 2024. So that wraps up all the rides, shows and attractions at the Tokyo Disney Resort. If you enjoyed the video then don't forget to hit the like button and if you would like to know more about Fantasy Springs check out this video here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Theme Park 101.